Well, one of my old chestnut pieces, a piece called A Christmas Carol, which the, the fingering is quite easy, but it does, it does actually, the tune actually suggests where it's going to go. So it, it, it automatically removes you from this part of the fingerboard and starts get, getting you up here. I think the use of harmonics is always good, you know, the... Which is nice, you know, so... Um, It's a fun thing to do. I've been doing that for years, just tuning it down from, from the suspended fourth to the to the major chord. And it's so easy to do, but audience love it. And I can, there's always almost an audible sigh when you do it. They go, they go, oh, that's nice. So the point I'm making is anybody that's composing in Dad Gad, you know, don't just, it's the whole point of a composition, you know, go where you feel the tune should go. And, and hopefully it'll lead you up to here because there's a lot happening up here. Hell of a lot. Uh, the first piece that you heard was a piece called Isabella's Wedding. I'll get this back in normal tuning. Which incorporated the harping technique, you know, which again lends itself beautifully to Dagad. Especially that section that goes. Um, into the harping then. Of course the lovely thing about Dad Gad is one finger chords. Lovely, isn't it? You've got those Ds. It's got four there, fretty one, and the other's open. Beautiful tuning. In order to really be effective with harping, you've got to have a good thumb. This is a false one. Well, actually, it's just my thumb now, but covered with uh, uh, super glue and um, acrylic dust. And you build up the neck. So it's like having a plectrum on the, on the thumb, okay? And basically you assign you assign the thumb to play the harmonic and the other fingers. I mean my technique is really crazy anyway, I just use a pick and little finger. Okay, so it's a, basically a two-finger technique. But 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 you assign the thumb and the first finger to play the harmonic over the 12th fret. Okay, you, can you see that? So the first finger is over the crown of the, the fret. It's always good on the 12th fret. Obviously you can. They're there, the 19th. But it's always clearer at the 12th fret. They ring out more bell-like. So, so that that is the thumb and first finger assigned to do that job. That's all it does. And the other fingers, I should think you, Jamie, as a finger style player, would probably favour the third finger. That's what falls closely under the under the uh, the fingers at the right hand. But I use a little finger. So you start off with the pattern. Don't worry about the left hand, but open fourth string. Okay, harmonic six. Open third string, harmonic fifth. Open second string, harmonic fourth. Open first string, harmonic third. Harmonic second. Harmonic first. So you alternate in open strings and picking, but it it all sounds like it's harmonics. It all sounds very harp-like. So you get this.
backwards is nice. Open first, harmonic third, harmonic open first again, harmonic fourth, harmonic second, harmonic fifth, open third, harmonic sixth. All right. So once you've got that, once you've got the right hand working, you've got the mechanics of it, then you can start bringing in the left hand to mirror what you're doing 12 frets apart. Quite simple. So if you're, what is fairly boring with harping is if you try to replicate an E major chord, it's okay, but it's just boring, you know, sort of. Right. But if you do something like, um, where are we? It's a bit more interesting. And doing the D shape, D, the D9 is quite nice with the F sharp on the bass. I always prefer the D shape, that one to that one. So that's quite nice. the things you can do. All sorts of things really. I'm just sort of like just doing sort of vaguely sort of random harping. But sometimes just doing um just using that right hand technique to play a har a harmonic as opposed to an open string, you know. You slide there. So you go move it around wherever you go it's going to sound lovely and the thing about harping is it almost takes it away from traditional guitar playing into somewhere that's magical and mystical I find that if you play harping in a guitar shop all the shredders will stop and go oh that's nice how'd you do that or whatever because <laughs> it's very very overtly musical so it starts off You go. And then you're up here. There it is. But what, what helped me a lot when I first started doing harping was I would do the ascending. And then I'd bar the first fret and do the descending. Move up one. Descending. So what that's uh, uh, helping you to do is to actually move up the fingerboard without doing fancy shapes. And get the mechanics of harping. Then you run out of frets. Guess where the next one is? Then it becomes fun, you see. I'm still finding magical things within harping. I just love it. I go, oh, I didn't know you could do that. And you run into this lovely ethereal fantasy world of guitar playing. What I would suggest they do is just go do it a step at a time. Drop D. Is a great way to start. So you drop that. So you got you got your standard D shapes, but you got this lovely drone at the bottom. If you like that, then you can start fiddling around with other tunings. Now, one that sprang to mind years ago with me was I just literally tuned the first string, the first string down to C, which is quite, quite a drastic low tuning. And 
the only thing I've ever written in this was a piece called Roots from an album re or released in 1979 called Fear of the Dark. A, and Roots is very much inspired by the playing of Bert Jansch. Bert's style, as you know, is very percussive. So I use this kind of, this riff. So straight away, you're going from a basic riff, and with that open tuning, it suggested the next part. So you're getting the... That tune wouldn't have been born without that tuning. The tuning created the tune. So again, it's, it's all a, a creative tool. Whatever you do, you know, you can use that. Yeah, you use the finger to slide that, so with that... Um... Yeah. The thing I like about it, because it, it, you, you, it's almost like a, run, a funky riff, and then it becomes pastoral, so you got the... Back to, so you got that. So you got a bit of Pete Townsend in there as well. You see, back to the rough, the uh, the funky. Is that whatever? It does help to have a great guitar like this and a low action. It is a beautiful thing. This is the second edition of um, Roger Bucknell's Gordon's Guild Trap Signature Series. Um, Roger, as you probably know, file guitars and one of the great guitar makers in the world and a very dear friend of mine. I'm, uh, I've known Roger since 1971 when he was a student. I think it, the very first 12 string he ever made was one he made for me. But the first edition that came out was Rosewood back and sides. Okay, same shape body. And then we thought it'd be rather nice to go for Maple because Maple's pretty, has a, a more lyrical, sweet sound to it. So this is uh, number two, yeah. This is the, the second Gordon Giltrap signature series filed, and you can, um, you can get all the details of, of, the, of, of this guitar on the filed website.